thought y'all was up in line. Somehow they got dropped off. Um, Brother Shaka's in the house. Sister Navita's in the house. Spreaker's in the house as well. All right. Um, so what I wanted to play for y'all. Well, let me make sure y'all know lines are open. Let me go and update this so that the line, lines are open 614-556-4535. The only thing I ask is that once we start the toast, you know what I'm saying, we finish the toast and then we can finish our conversation, all right, because I know a lot of we got stuff to say, but hold on, here we go. Let me go and post it up for those that might be coming through on speaker. Download the app, damn it. Get the app. It ain't going to hurt you. I'm still waiting for Anubis. Anubis is working on getting it up on iOS for me. So that all those with those Apple devices, you can be tuned in with us. 614-556-4535. This call is four, five, three, five. Boom. All right, who that on the line? This is Shaka, my friend. Mm. I was wondering. What's going on? All right. But so, before we get started the conversation, let me do a conversation starter. So, yesterday... I'm riding in a car. Vicky. Uh-huh. Okay, make sure you turn that fan off when you go, please. You hear me? Definitely All right, cool. So, I'm riding in the car, and I'm, I, I hear about this dude by the name of Booker Wright. And I'm going to read a little bit about Booker Wright, but I want to kind of use him to kind of frame the discussion that we might, that we're going to get in today. All right? Um... So for those that don't know, Booker Wright was a brother that um, he did an interview out of Mississippi in 1966. Um, the interview made his life rougher, right? Um, and um, I'll talk a little bit about that. But this, it says this gripping story of the Mississippi waiter, Booker Wright, picture and his revealing appearance in, 19, in a 1966 documentary film during the Civil Rights Movement has Wright's family speculating whether his appearance in the film led to his murder. So, now I just want y'all to uh, imagine the amount of courage it took for this dude in the middle of Mississippi, Mississippi to do this interview. Alright? And then we'll talk a little bit more about it, then we get a little bit, um, get a little bit more into what happened to him afterwards because I need people to understand the type of courage that it takes to really be a nation builder because a lot of times y'all think you know with the movies the way the movies got us portrayed and stuff is motherfuckers with guns standing up refusing to move and people out protesting and throwing bottles and shit but actually actually the, the, the true warriors in this movement are people that you don't even recognize are the true warriors. It's the people that, that are, um, it's, it's people in unlikely places making great big strides and steps that we have to be aware of and we have to be willing to celebrate. So when I heard this dude's story, I said, man, I got to share this with my fam because if I didn't hear about it, I know many of us never heard about it because they only aired it once. After this, after this was on, I think it was CBS, one time, they took it off and never went on again. And after 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 it aired, this man's life was flipped upside down. So go and listen to this real quick. This is Booker Wright, the white man we've just seen and heard think he's a hard-working, carefree Negro. But what does he think? He has his own place in the Negro district where he works by day. But at night, he waits on white folks. He tells how an evening goes with white folks who say they know him so well. Glad to see y'all. We don't have a written in you. I'll be glad to hear what they're going to serve tonight. Everything you serve is all the We have fresh shrimp cocktail, lots of good shrimp, French oyster on a half shell, fish oyster, oyster rockefeller, oyster down the beans, sweet oyster, fried oyster, Spanish macabre, what's in so long, steak, club steak, two bone steak, quarter house steak, rib out steak, left for fish or fish, raw mushroom, flavor salad, tank spaghetti, meatball, salt shell crab, French fried onion, golden brown, donut style. This food is where it says the last day. Now, I thought my customers, I thought my customers, be expecting of me. When I come in, this they want me to drink. Booker, tell my people what you do that. Some people are nice, some are not. Some call me Booker, some call me John, some call me Jim, some call me nigga. All that is, but you have to smile. If you don't, what's wrong with you? 
Why are you not smiling? Get over there and give me so and so and so and so. There are some nice people. I talk to Booker like this. Now, his name is Booker. Then I got some more people come in real nice. How you do, waiter? What's your name? Then I take care of something so good, and I keep that smile. I always learn to smile. The meaner the man be, the more you smile. Although you're crying on the inside. Or you're wondering, what else can I do? Sometimes you tip me. Sometimes you say, I'm not going to tip that nigga. You don't let me know tip. Yes, sir. Thank you. What did you say? Come back. Did I tip you? Don't talk to him like that. That's a good nigga. That's my nigga. Oh, yes, sir, boy. I'm your nigga. I'm trying to make a living. Why? I got three children. I want them to get an education. I want the boys to never get an education. But I want them to get it. And they are doing good. Night after night, I lay down and I dream about what I have to go through with. I don't want my children to go through with that. I want them to be able to get the job that they be qualified. That's what I'm struggling for. I don't want this and I don't want that. But I just don't want my children to go through what I go through with. Hey, tell that nigga to have that coffee. I'm on my way. Well, that's what you have to go through with. But remember, you have to keep that smile. All right. So that's Booker Wright's interview. Let me see if I can find the transcript. Booker Wright interview transcript. Because I know it's kind of hard to un, uh, to, to understand. Cause, but I want y'all to hear what this man said. And I want y'all to imagine the difficulty that fell on this man's life. Afterwards. Um, his whole family. The sound was kind of hard for me. I, I That's why I'm looking up the transcript. Um, <clears throat> it was filmed back in 1966. And. Um, let me find. And one of the key pieces that that he said in there was the meaner the white man the bigger the smile or the more you smile and he said something about he was working and crying on the inside and that he worked so that he would be able to provide his kids with the money and the education so that they will be able to not go through what he's going through. So he wanted to share the story so that his kids will have a better opportunity. Even though he knew that, I mean, because like, for example, um, when you read the story, um, I can't find a damn transcript. Um, oh, my God. All right. All right. Here we go. So now they did a documentary because I wanted I'm I'm going to want to see this on one of the movie nights. They did the documentary for um for Booker's and they call it they call it Booker's Place. All right, so let me see. All right, cool. Here we go. Uh, now archive. Now that's my customer. I say my customer. Be expecting of me. When I come in, this is the way they want me to dress. Booker, tell my people what you all got. Some people are nice. Some is not. Some call me Booker. Some call me John. Some call me Jim. Some call me nigga. All of that hurts, but you have to smile if you don't. What's wrong with you? Why you Why you not smiling? Get over there and get me some so-and-so and so-and-so. There are so... There are some nice people. Don't talk to Booker like that. Now his name is Booker. Then I got some other people come in real nice. How you do, waiter? What's your name? Then I take care of some good. Then I take care of some some so good, and I keep that smile. Always learn to smile. The meaner the man be, the more you smile. Although you're crying on the inside. So, um, I, I, I heard this shit and I was like, damn, I'm sitting up here like, you know, I mean, we, we talking about a full grown man. We talking about a man who, who, who decided, because it's like, like I say all the time, why well, ain't, uh, and it's, and it's kind of hard to put in practice, but once you start having kids out here, family, your life is no longer yours. I mean, that's kind of fucked up. 
when you think about it, but once you have children, your life is no is no longer yours. You know what I'm saying? It's like this man had to suffer indignities. Now I wanted he worked in a Sicilian restaurant. He worked in a Sicilian restaurant, right? Down south in Mississippi, right? Um he saved up enough money so that he can open up his own place where black folks come in and get drinks and stuff. So he would work during the day there, but then at night he would go to his own business. After this air, right, he was threatened, harassed, his his place was firebombed, and he was eventually shot dead in 1973, right? So, um... I just wanted to make sure that because I'm toasting ancestors and he's not directly one of my ancestors, um, I think I think the brother is worthy of being remembered um, because the amount of courage that it took in Mississippi, I don't even like going to Mississippi. I remember I might have been in Mississippi once and I felt uncomfortable the whole time I was in that place, family. I'm just telling you. Right, and this was this was in the early two thousands. This dude stood up in nineteen sixty six and spoke his truth and told his story. And many of us, even in the comfort that we're in right now, we're not doing it. We're not telling our story. We're not we're not sharing our narratives. Right? You know what I'm saying? I don't know why. We're not sharing our narratives. Because one of the problems is that a lot of us if we started sharing our narratives, we would really start seeing the reality that our people live in in this country. We need to start talking, family. See, because we need to know how many Heathcliff Hustables are out there. And how many, mother, I mean, really, we really need to know. Because I think the number would sober us up off of this high that we are, that we appear to be on. You know, um... Another piece that I wanted to share, um, I, often, I often talk about Antonio Moore and um, uh, Yvette Cornell because I'll be listening into this show. But he wrote an article, he wrote an article uh, in 2014 called The Decadent Veil. And I, I just want to pick up a, a few pieces of this. He says, I write this piece following the groundwork laid by W.B. Du Bois. Du Bois. The veil of double consciousness. The veil he described was a visualization of the racial duality blacks take on as part of their American identity. I now undertake the daunting task of clarifying the new veil of economics that has covered the struggles of a generation. The decadent veil looks at black Americans, uh, black Americans through a lens of group, theory, uh, of group theory that seeks to explain an illusion that has taken form over a 30-year span of financial deregulation and newfound access to unsecured credit. This veil is trimmed with millions, with million-dollar sports contracts, Rock Nation tour deals, and designer labels made for the heads of state. As black celebrity invited us into their homes through shows like MTV, MTB Cribs, we forgot the conditions of overall African Americans' financial affairs. Despite a large section of the 14 million black households drowning in poverty and debt, the stories of a few are told as if they represent those of millions, not thousands. It is this new veil of economics that has allowed for a broad swath of America to become not just desensitized to black poverty, but also Hip, hypnotized by black celebrity. How could we not? Our channels from ESPN to VH1 are filled with presentations of black Americans being paid a king's ransom to entertain as black celebrities have been shown to millions of people millions of times the story of real lives have also been lost. And with the engine that thrust forward the demand of for social justice by the masses. The heartbeat of social actions is to recognize your mistreatment and demand better. With each presentation of Kobe Bryant's $25 million a year contract or Oprah status 
as the sole African American billionaire, a veil of false calm is created within the overall American economic psyche about the immense black wealth disparity. Young black men from ghettos across America that used to dream to make great cha um, changes in racial inequality now just dream to be millionaires and to be like Mike and dunk a ball or dance on the stage. The decadent veil not only wraps the black community's vision outward to a larger economic world, but it also distorts outside communities' view of black America's actual financial reality. Federal Reserve numbers show the median net worth asset. This was in 2014, by the way, <clears throat> but we could bring it up. Federal Reserve numbers show that the median net worth asset less debts for white household in the top 1% is about $8.3 million. While the, weeding, the, while the median net worth for all white, for all white ho households is 112000 This is the exact midpoint of America's 90 million white families, where half or 45 million families have more and the other half possess less. That makes up for a staggering 74 times less wealth for an average white household when compared to the assets holding of the top 1% of white, ho white homes. This is among the highest levels of income stratification between classes in the developed world. Yet the wealth difference between the American black household in the top 1% and the average black household is several times worse, as reported by MSNBC. The median net worth of the few black households in the top 1% was $1.2 million, while according to the census, median net worth for all black households was about 6000 in total. A black family in the 1% is worth a staggering 200 times that of an average black family. If black America were a country, we would be among the, the, among the, among the most well stratified in the world. It is because of this economic, it is because of this concentration of wealth that any view of the average is destroyed for black America. The disparity between rich and poor is too high. When a few families have a massive percentage of wealth, it pulls the average up so ast astronomically that it makes the means present a false narrative. The mean present a false narrative. The key is this kind of stratification is to look closely at the median and uh, understand is real world impact. 8.3 million median net worth, net worth in white household top 1%, 1.2 million median net worth black household top 1%. 1% 1 has 74 times, okay, we he already discussed that. Look more closely at the numbers according to the MS, MSNBC, the degree of black America is a mere 1.4% of the top 1% of households. That means that only 16,400 black, black households of the total 14 million black families are in the top 1%. Yet based on the regularity with which media flaunts your black men signing million dollar sports and music contracts and the frequency with which they display fabulous videos with African Americans in expensive cars and houses, you would think a larger percentage of us were rich. I can stop right there, Navita. The, uh, um, I'm gonna I'm stop right there. I'm gonna stop right there. But if you want to read the rest of it, I just wanted to pique your interest. It's called the Decadent Veil: Black America's Wealth Illusion. All right, Shaka, what's up, bro? You online? Go ahead. It's on you. So what you gonna do? You there, Shaka? Maybe he hung up. That was long. I heard you on the line, man. I'll go back. I'll read some more. The sad truth. You you back up, Chaka? Hello? Uh-oh. Maybe it's me. Maybe my stuff is messing up. Chaka, check one, check two. Hold on. Let me see something real quick. Check my mic. That ain't me. 
It's not me. All right, cool. Um, you uh, he hung up. I think he'll call back in. All right. The sad truth is that added together, all black households are worth a mere one point four trillion of the eighty trillion of the total U.S. household net worth. A group that is thirteen percent of U.S. population and built one of the wealthiest countries the world has known. As slave labor controls less than 1.75% of that country's household wealth. With a massive amount of the small slither in the hands of a small black elite. According to the Pew Research Study, 35% of black households have negative or no net worth. Another 15%, damn, hold on. 35% of black households have negative or no net worth? Another 15%, less than 6000 in total household worth. And that's nearly 7 million of the total 14 million black households that have little or no security. Damn. Damn. Like I said, you know, I mean, it's some shit going on that for some reason, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we're, we're not catching it. Maybe we think it's a whole lot different. I, but hey, it is what it is. So, um, here we go. All right, what I have here is we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to open up one of these Ambrosia bottles. Because there have been a buzz on the internet about people having bottles causing them problems. So I want to make sure that you know how to open up a bottle because we're going to open one for this libation. Now, this, this method that I'm using, I call it the Ms. Tracy method because Ms. Tracy taught me, right? She says, always wipe your bottle down before you open it, all right? And you'll see why in a minute. I'm just, you know, I'm just... So making sure you got that, right? So then we take a bigger glass, like you see my glass right here, and we take and we put a bottle right down in there. Right? So then you're going to see why. You ready? Because these are living drinks. Food. Right? It's alive. And we want to make sure, we want to make sure that we get all of it. So we're going to cap it just a little bit. Just you don't open it all the way, just enough so that you can have your waterfall. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick close to the rivers and the streams that you're used to. We don't got no wealth, but we got our own waterfall. We got our own drink. Now, the one that I'm popping right now with the purple top this time is that flower ambrosia and i wanted to sample that for y'all on here right y'all see that so now as it starts slowing down as it will eventually then you can feel safe about just taking the whole damn top off i didn't mean for the top to fall in there that wasn't supposed to happen See, if I had my stunt double, you know, but the Giami budget don't allow stunt, stunt, uh, stunt double no more. So, you know. All right. So, this is the flower ambrosia, and you can smell the chrysanthemums as well as the jasmine flowers that are in it. And look at that. Now, this is the difference between a gallon and with the gallon, it won't do it like this. Right? The gallon, you know, with the single bottles, it holds the air a little bit better and it foams up. You see that it's alive. I mean, the gallon is still alive. Don't get me wrong. As a matter of fact, let me demonstrate. I'll be right back. So, here is a lemon, lime, and ginger. Somebody was supposed to come get it yesterday because I know somebody going to be like, you told me you ain't had no more though. I don't. It was supposed to be gone yesterday. I... Stop tripping. Stop tripping. I hear you. I hear you. 
Stop. Right? So when you pop it, if you watch, it's still, you see it? You see it? You see it? It's live, right? So now, that's because I have a little bit of air up here, but as you start drinking, it, the activity start going down. Right, because the sugar is being consumed, and with the sugar being consumed, the micro microorganisms are getting stronger, and they're trying to breathe. Right, so what happens is when you open up the top, you allow for the air to escape, and they all start rushing up there. We we about to get the hell up out of here. We about to get out. We gonna get we we go. Oh damn, he shut it off on us again. Right, so all these drinks are alive. Oh yeah. You know who bottle that is. I, Shaka be getting those antique bottles. I trade them. Alright, so, let's see. Okay, cool. Alright, so now, we about to do our toast. I ain't gonna hold y'all too much longer. We're gonna do our toast. I'm gonna clean up the kitchen. I'm gonna get the hell up out of here. Alright, here we go. Um... So first, give an honor to Creator. By the way, the name you choose, call that Creator. Man, them flowers smell good. Um, we lift up our glass to the Creator and we say, Ashe. From their family, we're going to pull out the family list. Oh, snap. Speaking of that, I got to pull my son's. Um, where my pen at? Hold on, Facebook. I got a, I got a list. I got a list. I got to, cause I didn't write it down. Hold on. Uh, messenger. Boom. Hopefully y'all still there. If not, I apologize. Let's see. Uh, Spreaker, you still there? So what I'm doing right now is, cause I be feeling bad when I don't get the ancestors down the way I'm supposed to. Um. So I got some ancestors that I'm adding on right now. Uh, we got Ryan McCormick Senior. We got Sabrina Easley. We have Rayshon Easley. Wow. And we got Javaya. McCormick. Cool. We're going to say her name three times because she just passed away and she was a baby. All right. So let's go back. I'm back, Facebook. I'm back. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Um, calling on the ancestors by whatever name you choose to call it. Um, calling on the ancestors. Here we go. Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert, the Tech Center, Davis, Herman Brown, C, Rosalie, Tilly, George, William, Walter, Chris, Benny, Gass, and Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris. I'm Fiend, Cleveland, Geneva Brown, Margaret Ellis, Watch Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Alvaro Brown, Gina Gaines, Herman Brown, the Sacred Barbara Twigs, Watch Ellis Jr., Katie Ellis, Nikki Ellis, Jamon Jones, Jeremiah Tappan, John Fullard, Montague Pimpinel, No More X, Pat Maya Ra, Malika Fakur, Dr. Marianne Williams, Kojo Kamal, Elder Farmer, Elder Millie Dixon, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusuf Weston, Elder Ogeny, Elder Ron Coleman, Elder Robert Donaldson, Alfred Brofro, Ector Jr., Jay Edwards, Carlisle Harris, Grace Lundy, Inez Harris, William Bill Moss, Phyllis Rose, Sterling and Lucy Wright, Derek L. Pullian, the Luxor Brother, Miss Eda Brooks Crawley, Miss Marie Nelson, Mr. Frederick Crawley Sr., Miss Jerry Brunson, Mr. Alonzo Johnson, Miss Marie McDowell, Janice Foster, Charles Jordan, Kill Smith, Walter Smith, Richard Triggs, Francis Johnson, Mary Franklin, Jimmy Williams, Daniel Ford, George Gibson, Anna Loretta Clark, Inez McCray, Fritz Clark, Frankie Justice, Katie Justice, Derek Rendleman, Virginia Rogers, Reverend James Smith, 
Lewis Henderson, Calvin Spratling, Mary Elizabeth Walker, Raymond Walker Sr., Sarah Jane Carter, Michael Ford Jr., Kellen D. Russell, Susie B. Smith, Teresa Clay, Melvin Dale Hodge, Melvin Dale Hodge Jr., Herman Copeland, Mildred Copeland, Jenny Clay, Bird Beattie, Sarah Well, Levita Farmer, I go to Sue, Cheryl Harvey, Aunt Charmaine, Aunt Evelyn, Theolis Hasbury, Harvey Hasbury Sr., Leonard Dickinson, T.C. Islam, Terrell Dunbar, Will Thomas, Sarah Burry, Mark Walsh, Merle B. Thorne, Pearl G. Thorne, Ida Johnson, Florence M. Carter, Joanne Thorne, Eric Patricia Lewis, Juanita Wright, Robert Wright, George Wright, Mary Eliza Frederick Davis, Mary Elizabeth Rogers, Mary Esther Keach Larice, Linda Watson Hammonds, Jarrell Giles Watson, Sparrow Slimming, Seven Lewis, Andrew Holmes, Pearl Moore, Percy Moore, Percy Moore Jr., my fault. Mildred Owens, Booker T. Bowden. Wow. Wow. Booker T. Bowden, Charlie Hunt, Sammy Stover, Hilda Pearson, Sturgeon Thornton, Richard Thornton, Lovini Hall, Freeman Banks, the Mary Moss, Ophelia Peacock, Willie Thornton, Napoleon Kennedy, Mark Ramsey, Paul Ramsey, Matt Ramsey, David Ramsey, Charles and um Charles E. Thornton, Frankie Quell, Urania Thornton, Bernice Quells, Ernestine Jackson, Frankie Johnson, Teresa Mormon, Leon Johnson, Charles Bell. Vivian Ramsey, S.E. Johnson, Delrita Johnson, Leon Johnson, James W. West Sr., James Parham, Dana Jones, Henry World, James Farmer, Mary Chavez, Leon Grace, Bessie Johnson, Maddie, my father, Hattie Levester, Mary Moreland, Paul Moreland, Elder Caleb, Rosemary Martineer, Elder Amatet Wellman, Fred Douglas Triggs Sr., Delma Triggs, Thomas and Lula Berry, Lacey and Eleanor Howe, Frank and Russell and Davis, Fred Douglas Triggs II, Vena Triggs, Reverend Eddie Moore, Helen Fuller, Eugene Jackson Sr., Richard Ellis, Silas Alexander, Charles Maxwell, Percy Mal Alexander, Arthur Reynolds Stanley, La um, Stanley Lockhart, Ricky Lockhart, William Lockhart, Woodrow Lockhart, Brenda Porter, Deacon Hargrove, Carla Sawyer, Andrew Parker, Doris Donald, Ellis Murphy. We have the Freedom's Hines, Inez Bostic, Edna Bostic, Winifred Scantlebury. Phyllis Lee, Eugene Spratling, Calvin Spratling, Charles Wood and Penny Brown, Roy Lee Printup Jr., Miriam Johnson, Wilbur Longmire, Edith Catney, Janice Carter, Michael Carter, Leon Pina Carter, Margaret Carter, William Carter, Lisa Jordan, Charles Lee Mosley, Joe Davis, Timothy Butler, Gene Holmes, Dana Jones, Peter Charles, Christy Nichols, Cardinal Robinson, Rosemary Charles, Ada Pearl, Bob Ingalls, Jack Wallace, Warren M. Finch, Warren P. Finch, Tim Ingalls, R.G. Finch, William Billingsley Jr., Jennifer Sensenball, Hazel Gasson, Jerry Brantley, Brian Watson Jr., Kaneko Parsons, Jason Cathy, Stacey Trice, Frank Smith, Mother Bertha, Michael Lena, David Brown, Ruth Carter, June Cox, Ruth Cox, Paula Cox, Ronald Irving, Judy Hubbard, Irene Johnson, Francis Boots Jefferson, Dan Wilkinson Sr., Emma McClendon, Jerry Doyle, Amina Robinson, Mary Nichols, Patricia Williams, Shabaka Ture, Donna Hill, Richard Glebus, Lee Irby, Tommy Irby, Boy Irby, Jim Gaucher, George and Haley Johnson, Archie and Margaret Armstead, Diana, Diane Scott, Erica Armstrong, Archie Beck, Anna McGill, Charles McDaniel, Christine Cottrell, Aunt Becca, Alice Arnold, Arthur Arnold, Hattie Reed, Charles Reed, Eula, Andrew Baker, Patricia Edwin Brooks, Gwilin and Bob Hatch, Kimball, Vernon, Bradley Kim, Janie, Harriet Tubman, Cates, Spencer Sturgis, Sally Mae Baker, Ethel Baker, Creola Baker, Geneva Baker, Aaron, Nino, Baby Hatch, Hatch Sr., Mally Miller, Housie Hatch, Dad Cleveland, Mother, Mother Gibson, Alex Nixon, John Bowie, Lester and Rachel Saunders, Dorita Ross, Riola Ross, Robert Nelson, Francis Stevenson, Leroy Stokes, Neely Johnson, Fletcher Swan, Maddie and Charlie Scott, Vivian Stevenson, Mona Ann Lewis, Cornetta Lyman Lewis, John Jackson, William Dallas Lewis, Mary Francis, Chappelle Jackson, Michael Slade, Joanne Perkins, Richard Jackson, Martha Ford Dawson, Big Mama, Nana Harris, Eva Ford, James Harrison, Margaret Towns, Mary Williams, Leroy Q. He Sr., Albert Moore, Miss Vanilla, Albus Motley, Geraldine Elizabeth, Douglas Thompson, Earlton Houston, Lud Alls, Elijah Alls, Rome Alls, Henry West Statton, Joel Jamel Alls. Ann Pierce, Donald Carter, Lillian Green, Nathan Green, Bette Vaughn, John Dewey, and Ruth Beard, Tim Butler, Ramey Laura Newton, J.B. Foggy, Thomas Newton Sr., Baba Naeem, Jeanette Sanders, Jerry C. Sanders, Roy Pruitt, H.J. Brantley Sr., Henry Wilson, Rufus Jenkins, Minnie Wilson, 
Catherine Sanders, Muriel Ellis, Elizabeth Battles, Henrietta Irby, Mildred Herb, um, Mildred Armstead, Margaret Armstead, Catherine, uh, Catherine Anthony, Ruby Brown, Charles Walker Sr., Charlie Walker, Cecil Russell, Diane Irvin, Hiron Phillips, William Ford Jr., Margaret Logan, Phyllis Barnett, Lee Irvin Sr., Michael Irvin, Deion Watson, Ozella Watson, Hugo Watson, John Caldwell Sr., Rob, Robbie Lee Caldwell, Nevaeh Mitchell, Ron McCormick, Ron, Ron McCormick um, Sr. Let me put that senior on there because I don't want none of my kids calling in panicking and shit. Sabrina Easley, Rayshawn Easley, Javea McCormick, Javea McCormick, Javea McCormick, my grandbaby. Rest in peace. All right, um, all right, family. So we lift up our glass. We take a sniff first. Oh, you flowers, you smell so pretty. We lift up our glass. We say our shape from there. We move to the present moment. Move to the present moment. I'm not going to put it on for y'all today. I'm not going to do it today. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it today. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Come on, Rob, come on. What's the matter with you? Tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. What? There is no tomorrow. What? There is no tomorrow. It's the eye of the tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. Um, in the moment, family. We are in the moment. There is no tomorrow. There is no yesterday. There is only now. And we have every opportunity. I ain't going to say every. We had an opportunity. To use this now to empower our lives and empower our future generations. What you doing with your moment? What you doing with your moment? Right? What you doing? Right? I'm gathering information. I'm loading. I'm loading. The, I'm loading the ultimate weapon. I'm sharpening the, the ultimate weapon. So I, I I bring stuff to you. So now, uh, Sister Navita, if you check your email, if you check your email, I sent you um, a copy of the prospective newsletter we're working on newsletter we're going to get the newsletter out for two about two dollars a month you'll be able to get the newsletter we're going to be working on that we're experimenting i'm experimenting with it now between me and some of the other people in the family so that we can make sure that we're going to be putting out quality information for you quality ideas um how to's you know what i'm saying because the the whole the whole the whole purpose the whole purpose, right, is to make each individual that pick up what we're doing, whether it's one of whether it's one of the books, whether it's a coffee cup, whether it's a glass, whether it's a daily to whatever whatever we whatever we produce from Giame, right? We want to make sure that you are going to be able to use it as a tool to move you forward, forward in your life purpose. Cause you know that's what we about. You know what I'm saying? So today is a mining. I ain't going to say what it is because you should know what it is. Those of you that are on the journey, when you say those days of the week, you better go on and get me my, get, get, get my damn push, get them push-ups. Except when you like, when you cold switching, right? When you talking to others, right? And you cold switching, you know, we don't hold you responsible for that, right? Because you, if you on, if you on your job and you talking about it, money, <laughs> you on your job, you talking about it, money, motherfucker, like, what? On them, nah. You got a code switch, right? But when we talk amongst ourselves, we hold ourselves responsible for what we say we're going to do. What we doing, right? What we doing? What we doing is we're building, right? So we hold ourselves responsible to that, right? So part of the building is changing the language, learning the language of our tribe, right? So you shouldn't, and make a long story short, you should know what Imani means. You should know why we say Imani. What, what what I'm talking about at this point in time, if you've been around long enough. Um, on the modic, uh, the modic principle today is harmony. The M7, the millennium principle, the millennium seven principle today is trust. The color is red. The hermetic law is gender. Males born on this day are quasi, that's cleave. Cleave is a quasi. Female, akusua. Akusua. 
right? And like I said, the shirts eventually after we get the first the first stack off, right? The first group of shirts off, we're going to be able to have people be able to pick the day that they're on. So on the day, on on the shirt, you will have a colored shirt for the day. Like for 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 example, those that's born on Imani's, right? Those Imani born, those Quasis or Kasuas, right? You will have the red shirt. You have Daily Toaster. You have on the back. You have all of the principles of the day. You have the money. You have what the money is. You have the myotic principle. You have the M7 principle. If, if it's different, you have uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the the hermetic law. And you have the male name. Male name and female name. Right? And then we might be able to get flying up if we, are, if we got enough shirts going out. We're going to put the individual day name on it. Hell, put your name on it. I'm, but, you know, that's going to be a lot of money. I'm not on that, you know, because then the price is going to just be outrageous. Right? So, um, today, from the African Center Cultural Virtue and Value System, Emotional Emancipation Circle, from the Emotional Emancipation, we will be having another class. We, we will be having um, warrior training this coming week. I'm going to start being a little bit uh, more diligent about getting information out so that we can start getting in, getting the numbers. Also, my nation builders out there, right? We weren't able to have a meeting yesterday. We need to sit down. So if you're on this, whether you're on Spreaker and you pop in, y'all going to pop in because that's where our ancestors work. In some form or fashion, you're going to get my message, right? We need to sit down because I, what I don't want to happen is we start moving forward with some shit. And you crying and whining about how nobody listened to you or how Brother How Tim did. It's some shit that need to be done. I'm just letting y'all know, right? Those of you that, that got in contact with me, this message, a lot of it, it misses you. Those that didn't even get in contact, we're going to we gonna have some words because that's fucked up, right? Didn't even, you didn't even respond, that's fucked up. I mean, I'm, we, we on, I'm, I'm doing it on here, that's fucked up. Right, so um, but we still family, you know. And family, we gonna have to deal with it. We gonna have to deal with each other because, like I said, either we building or we not. Be honest with me. I'm not. I'm. I'm too old to be fucking around. I'm in my fifties now. I'm officially. I'm officially fifty years old. I ain't got time to be fucking around. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I was able. I was able to gamble and stuff and 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 and. And, and experiment with movements in my 20s. I was able to do it a little bit in my 30s. I was able to do it. In, but I'm in the 50s now, right? I'm on, I'm, my, my kids are on a rise. And I'm on my decline. So I need to know that what I'm working on is real. I need to know that what I'm working and who I'm working with is real. Why? Because at any given moment, because right now, I'm opening up papers and motherfuckers my age right now is falling dead. And I want to make sure that if something happened to me, right, that my kids are surrounded by people who can set an example. Not necessarily take care of them because we're going we gonna to handle our business. But, but they'd be surrounded by people that could constantly remind them of what their father's commitment was so that we can have. I mean, because this is a, generation, this is a generational struggle, struggle, family. Generational. See, many of us is trying to fight the battle. We're trying to fight the battle. We're trying to fight the war in just our lifetimes, not realizing that this shit is generational. We're the only ones that's not realizing that. We have to equip the, the next generation with the tools so that they can be successful. This is where we've been falling down. This is why it's important for people to erase our culture. This is, this is why it's important for people to, to constantly feed us illusions. Why? Because it allows us to forget that it's about the next generation. It allows us to, to not really realize that everybody else is fighting generational war. Generational war. You want to learn a little bit about that? Go and pick up uh, the destruction of black civilization. Learn how people sit on the fringes of, 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 of our territories and just waged a silent war for hundreds of years until they was able to get in. This shit's still going, I mean, this, 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 it's still raging. They're on the borders of your mind right now just weighing your ass down. Right? Right now. And the only thing I'm saying is, family, hey, 
hey, if we about it, let's be about it. If not, let's be honest with each other. I'm I'm still gonna love. I'm still I'm still gonna love you. You know what I'm saying? Now, I only know of one who was very clear with me that he wasn't fucking with what I'm talking about right now. He was very clear, and he's always been clear with me. But everybody else, if you, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, family. I know it's fucked up. All right, well off. In well off, John, sense of honor, self-respect, a kind ethics, goodness of human nature, and in Yoruba, Oju Ona, originality. And I know I got the right goddamn numbers. All right, we lift up our glass and we say our shay. I can't wait to taste this. Uh-oh, so my on the line, I'm almost done. From there, we move to the, our future generations. We toast our children, our children's children onto infinity. From there, we move to all of our relations. We lift up our glass, we say our shay. From there, we do the selfish libation. We lift up our glass and we toast ourselves and we toast our aspirations and we ask the creator and ancestors for what we need right now in this moment and we say I say from there family where we go from there we move on right and where we go I toast the most powerful being in the room and that's you my daily toasters god damn it Woo-hoo. give it up for the daily toasters <laughs> I say, I say, I say. All right, somebody on the line. Who that? Who that be? It's Shaka. Welcome back. Yes, sir. Man, now this is a little bit orange because of the new ingredient that I have in there. Um, you can especially see it on the top. That. That uh, that bee pollen was a pretty good new combination, new new thing to add. You know, my glass has a, a golden tint to it. Does yours have that? No, nah, because mine's is real. Oh, mine. Well, you know, I I don't know. It might just have a glow like off the glass. No, actually, glass. it don't. I think actually, actually, in all honesty. When I think, when I look at my glass, I think yours might actually be a little bit bigger than mine. I'm just saying, I got to be honest. I keep fucking with you, but I, cause when I think about it, I like, damn, all right, cause you know it would have been too easy for me to walk in the store and all of a sudden I fall into a glass. I mean, cause that was a big ass glass that you pulled out. But <laughs> so this is so that flower ambrosia. Go can ahead. You, can you pour a whole sixteen ounces of water in it? A whole 16 ounce. Chaka, the bottles I use is 32 ounces, man. Yeah, I get, I get, I get, um, shit. I get damn near 30 ounces. Damn, I'm damn, it's like 30 ounces. I can pour 30 ounces. I just poured the whole damn bottle. This is 16 ounces right here. That, uh oh. Uh oh. I think the truth is coming out. Uh oh. So you only get no, no, what time? I can, I can, no, 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 no. I, I can pour a whole. That's what I'm asking. Because I can pour a whole bottle in there. A whole bottle. Can, can you pour a 32 ounce into your glass, man? I can do 30 ounces. Come on now. Honesty. Set, set us free. Man, we got to. Yeah, I got to come there. In, in no, the no, no, no. You ain't no. We can measure. No, the measurements, the measurements are the same. 32 ounces look, in that glass. Look, dude. You cannot pour no 32 ounces in that glass. You was bullshit. I got to call you out. You ain't, let me see your 32 ounces going. Shaka, look. Look, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This is, this right here is 33.8 ounces. So I do about 30 ounces. It'd be about two ounces left in here, if even two ounces, dog. I'm trying to tell you. 16. So. Oh! He just, oh! Oh! Go! Right after the World Cup and all this, the truth comes out. And I was just, I was in a moment of honesty. 
Now I am in doubt about that small ass gag glass you got. I might have gave you too much credit. God damn it. Mm -mm -mm. Praise the Lord. You see that 16 ounces right there. I've been sipping on this. This man, whatever you, I, I hate. I'm not even looking at you. I'm just on the phone. Oh, okay, okay. But listen. all right, cool. Well, let me let me describe it. Uh, it no, ain't even no, you ain't got to describe it. Ain't even it. halfway full. I don't believe. I don't believe. I do not believe. <sighs> I I think I think you are telling an untruth to the world. Oh my God! I'm people on Facebook just see. They see every morning. I pour the damn thing in there. It just be less than two ounces left. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep it all the way moving. So, with so you. you're, you're an illusionist now. Hey, if that, hey, shit. If I am, I need to be, I need to be, I, I need to be on tour because we need, we, we, we need that tour money. You know what I'm saying? Selling t-shirts and shit. I wish I could. Shit. <laughs> hey, was you on Giami Journey? Because somebody looked at the bottle, and said nice bottle. That's one of your bottles that I got some of the stuff here. I got a question for you up there, up there in Cleveland. How's your recycling program going? Shaka. I'm exploded. I, I'm exploded too many to even test. I, I, I don't recycle. Really. Hello? If I sell a bottle, I think they should be gone. You know what I mean? And the thing is that it's not, it's not bad. That's oh, he bad. having a conversation, so we're going to eavesdrop in. Hold on. Everybody listen to this private conversation because we might get some black mellow boy. Look at that. I just said, we might get some white mellable shit off of him. Because he back there talking about his glass right now. So we might be able to hear the truth. Because I want everybody to know the truth. He just said that he could only hold 16 ounces in his glass. And y'all been sitting here watching me pour at least 30 ounces every time I toast on this motherfucker. Y'all been watching it. Y'all know the truth. Y'all know the truth. Everybody out there know the truth. The battle of the glasses have been decided. God has just struck. Down with Wakanda and down with Chaka and them, that little teeny weeny glass he got. I thought it was big. You hear that racist talk in the background? You hear that? I was racist because I'm white kid. Hey, man. Are you? Are you? You talking to us or you talking to somebody else? Get on the phone, man. All right, family. Hey. I ain't going to hold you up. Come to you. You talking to me? Yeah. Something wrong with your phone, man. I thought you was talking to somebody else. It don't, it don't sound right. It, it went down. It's like you put it down. No, I'm right here. All right. Well, I don't know what happened, but the, the line is horrible. Man, that flower stuff is. I'm about to go out and buy some. I'm about to go buy buy some more chrysanthemums and some jasmine. Mm. Yeah, man. Now that's a lot um, better. That's a lot better. No, so, I'm eventually need for y'all to come out and help me plot out this uh, this garden. Or at least Glee. You know? Because I'm talking about some 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 acreage. You said acreage? Yeah. Hmm. Well you don't have to do no raised beds. Hmm. Right. I'm talking about then having a uh turning the steeple into like a hydroponic lab, man. And get some hibiscus up in there. Well, not you. Well, now let's put it this way: the one that's better than hydroponic is aeroponics. That's what we got inside the school. Got aeroponics. Okay. Now the only issue with aeroponics is the root crops. We gonna have problems with. Actually, we won't even grow no root crops. Root crops on those. I mean, I'm, I'm imagining you can, but in what we got, it don't work that well. Even though the beets, okay. even though I did have some beets that we did grow. You know what I'm saying? I had to, mm -hmm. you know, I had to get that 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 volcano wool up out that. But when well, they them damn things was good, you know what I'm saying? But hey, but come, you want to give us a report on what's going on up there, or what you, what's, what's what's happening? Well, I'm 
Man, you know, I still need the same number. However, at this hour, I feel more confident in the call that I just made uh, not too long ago. Um, that it may be, uh, you know, hey, I'm I'm really I'm really moving by faith right now. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but you had texted me and said yeah. you had the song. Yeah, and then I had I had to pull out of that. Homeboy was trying to snatch the property up from up under me. Uh, right now, this 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 is the Pisces speaking. Cause I, I think you were Aries, right? Right. Okay. This is the Pisces speaking. When you say snatch it up from under you, what do you mean? What I mean is, homeboy was like, "Yo, if you want, I could pay the whole sixty-eight right now." We just have to finance it on my credit because I got the seven hundred, and mine will go on the uh, title. I'm like, no, that's not what's about to happen. He is like, uh, he's like, look, he was like the stained glass. He was like, I, yeah, you know, I could, I could sell the stained glass alone for a hundred grand. I'm thinking, I'm like, kind of yeah. thinking that shit too. But then, what you gonna, what you gonna, what? What can you put up in there to replace the stained glass? Do they got do they got glass makers? Some new stained glass. It's just it's just one of those things that because this stained glass is like a hundred years old, you know, it's got I guess it's got a little bit more whatever, worth or whatever, you know what I mean? And so PC is that yeah, I mean I get all that, but what it comes down to for me is if you can do that shit, go ahead and do it. Take your commission out, give me my profit and keep it moving. You know? But so wait, hold on. Up the side of his so, shit, and and really, what it was is, you know, he he told me initially, yeah, you know, me and wifey, we trying to make a power move, and this would be like our first project, and blah, they skip. I'm like, yo, I'm not really looking to get you all like like that involved. It's, you know, so we talking this initial piece. If you wanna if you wanna talk about a percentage of a parcel. We can deal with that, but that's all I'm looking for right now. So they just wanted you know the whole I mean? damn thing. They wanted the whole damn thing. Yeah. 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 So, no. So now I got vultures just sitting on the sideline waiting. waiting for me not to be able to get uh, get it so that they can just jump on it. But at the same time, like I said, I just made a call. And uh, I painted a good picture. And the only response I got back was, I'm about to make two calls right quick. All right. So, mm -hmm. all right. so we keep, so. we got the libations. You already know when we do the selfish libations what you're supposed to do. Um, so, now, family. Um, so, now. I'm trying to get these t-shirts off because like what one of the things we want to avoid is the next time we have an opportunity like this, we want to avoid having to even pull on the folks. So this is why I talk about, I mean, because uh, Lady J's talking about, she she says personal savings, and I agree, right? We should all have some personal savings, but I'm saying is there comes a time like when we start talking about being tried, we need to start paying taxes to ourselves. So we got a, a central fund. That we could go, I mean, like I said, there could be a council that we put up over that shit. And we have discussions about, hey, we got we got $80,000 sitting up in here with interest. I mean, what, the, the reality is, man, is that, like, you know, just doing doing the right thing. That's, see, that's the thing. I don't know if you got an issue with that. But doing the right thing means that we can, you know, we'll be able to protect our credit. You know what I mean? Like. Look at my situation. Yeah, it's a, I, I, I've been, you know, I've been high posted. You know what I mean? It's like I've been standing alone so long. It's like, you know, it, I am the, I am the, uh, yeah, well, it, what it is, though, is that just need to, uh, we just need to pimp out our straw man a little bit more. And, you know, right now ain't no, ain't no reason why within the whole collective, we, you know, we don't either, A, have the level of belief of what is happening and, and what can potentially happen right now with just that move being made. Number two, it don't make no sense why, you know, of, of all the age uh, ages that we're dealing with, that we're not pulling together, figure out who's got a 640 to be able to get that 
uh, up to twenty thousand by tomorrow. But listen, you know what I mean. What I'm saying that's one thing. What bothers me is this, man. Like you, I mean, did you read the? Were you listening to those numbers that I was reading to you? That, yeah, early. I think you know what I'm saying. It's it's like it's kind of bothersome that we would even need to even talk about credit for something like sixty eight thousand dollars when we got right. when we got motherfuckers to go to the club and spend sixty eight thousand dollars. Well, what we thought. Hey man, My listen. Boy, I thought, you got I thought, you I got thought. you got great deals. Listen, you got great great deals on houses on the land bank. For sixty-eight thousand, what I'm saying is, is that I got a whole ass cathedral and a house. So now, be, you know what I mean? Detail, detail for us right now, like some of the activities and 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 the ventures. No, just, just do it, do it like this, man. See, this is my superpower. Close your eyes and imagine being all right. You got a you got a whole half of a city block. You on the main street and the main street. MLK meets Buckeye. You can Google Maps that part and see the right. whole layout. And as I described to you, like, here we go. On one side, you go in on the 108 side because it's, the other side of the church is so big. It's on 108, east 108, right? So you go in to the parking lot. Parking lot is deep enough. To have an amphitheater in the back of it with a gazebo that uh, that goes up to the front of the church, which is elevated from the parking lot. Uh-huh. That's down. All right. Now, in that parking lot, we have enough space to have vendors and performances every single weekend of the calendar year that is good weather out. Even farmers market right there. From the gazebo all the way down to the open field, and I, in, in, in that open field, I still want that labyrinth uh, garden to be right there next to the uh, parking lot. I want it to come from the front to the back and wrap all the way around the property. Now, the first door that you go into is a commercial kitchen. That commercial kitchen is connected to an auditorium that has a stage in it. That part right there. It's going to be Shakatai's International Soul Food Cuisine and Messengers Lounge Supper Club. That means we can have performances there all the time. That means we can feed the neighborhood all the time. And with that kind of signage where there is none right now, that's going to bring life and more safety to the playground across the street, which I'm going to demo and give them a brand new one and dedicate it to the city. All right? Now, uh, the next parcel over is what they call the rectory which is basically living quarters on the upstairs part, and downstairs is just another big-ass hall that has a stage and a piano on it right well, now. now th- that th- that's what I'm not clear on. The rectory, is that separate from the three-bedroom? Yes. Okay. All right. So those are two yes. different buildings. Because we're still talking about the same building that the church is in. Oh, the okay. Church, this is inside of the church. All right, so you, you all right, so pay attention. This is the part you walk from the restaurant part down a little corridor, and then you go into another hall that has a piano on the stage, and that is where the youth arts program is going to go. Initially, we started off on a voucher program for after school situation. We can even do the breakfast situation, and and my young guy will be able to shuttle them to school. All right? So we have that uh, We had that piece going on, and upstairs from there we have the bed and breakfast as well as the senior community because that's where the residential is and the church. All right? How many, now, bed, how many, how many bedrooms? And listen, what it is right now ain't what it's going to be. We're going to re- redo the floor plan, but right now you can accommodate about five candidates. Okay. All right. And then, like I said, men have a, a, a couple of suites for uh, for the bed and breakfast. Now, uh, moving closer to the chapel, there's also another suite over there, kind of like the pastor's suite, and that can be an additional space for the bed and breakfast. 
Um, but when you get to the chapel, this is what's going to change about it. Like the pool pit, beautiful. You walk in from the rectory into the pool pit. In front of the pool pit, I want an octagon, like an MMA octagon, and then the pews staying where well, they stop. are. Stop. Stop. You do Wait, know. listen. You, you, what, please listen. explain the octagon, nigga. I, I, help, help me. You want an octagon in the church? No, I want the octagon at the Black Phoenix. Oh. Listen to what I'm saying to Okay, you. go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead. We are going to build a mezzanine level with studio spaces that companies that pertain to the business of multimedia can purchase from us and add to the business of Life Matters Entertainment. The next level up from there is the executive suite, right? You, if you look at this place from the pulpit, looking to the back of the church, you will see the face of everybody's business looking back at you as if these are tabs on your computer. Everybody here will be working together. That octagon, yes, is for the instruction of the martial arts as well as to add to the production theater, which when you're on the pulpit, you're standing on stage. Everybody that buys one of these suites has the opportunity to be present at every performance event or even sell their box tickets for profit. So, now, in that room, how many people could come to a live show? So I can understand. So you got the you got the you got the units up about two hundred. Okay, so you got the units upstairs where where it's like a private party can be going on, right? Right. And like, right. So and like, how many people could one of those do do each one of those hold? Because I got I got I really like got I got to get a visual because I, I need a visual of this. So you got. You got where you got rooms where people could come and bring guests and shit, and they just got their own private suite. Right. And how many of those are up there, and how many in each room? I want to be able to situate about six of those, six including the executive suite, and that's just you know to wrap around. I mean, you will be able to to see the stage from each of these suites. When you're sitting on the pews that are already there from the back of the auditorium in design, you'll be able to see it from all of those. you see the performance from all of those spaces. And behind the pulpit will be one of those big screens that you can either flip to uh, green screen or do any digital stuff. And that's the whole point is so that we um, in the different companies are able to visually, uh, you know, put this media together in real time and, and be, you know, all in synchronicity with, with each of the projects. So the, the stage so, the stage is available for any of those individuals that, um, in a sense, buys the suite or rents the suite, and that yes. is available for them to use for their own perform performances needs. So, for example, if I'm if I want to do um, a, a live a live stream um, concert right there, I could do a live stream concert. Or if I wanted to even do a a, a show. Right there, I could do it and have right. access to that stage as long as it does not conflict with somebody else who had it before me. Right. So understand what I'm saying and what I've already said is that with the amphitheater and gazebo outside, that's one stage. In Shaka Ties, you got another stage. In the Youth Arts Program, you got another stage. In the chapel, you got the main stage. That's the Black Phoenix Theater. Okay. I keep on going. Keep on walking us through. All right. Now, keep in mind, speaking of, of, of those innovative uh, studios in the mezzanine level, it doesn't even exist yet. But I tell you this, by the time we create that, what I'm saying to you right now is that I am willing to even take an investment and be enabled to... Uh, uh, assure a certain square footage of these and be able to, to, to get those to the investors so that they will actually be able to either A, 
Bell them. Woo! Or B, collect the rent from them. All right, and keep in mind, with an incubator space like this, number one, only the companies that are thriving are going to want to rent them. Only the ones that believe in, 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 uh, in this method of, you know, powerhousing, which is what I'm talking about. That's a powerhouse. That's a multimedia powerhouse. Because you still got the young people coming in for the transitional living program, and if they want to go more into the IT and, and the promotions online, guess what? They can make more cryptocurrency than we can over the course of the day because they got time to be present online and, and just walking around the facility, you know, and, and letting people see what this is. Now, keep in mind, this has got not just curb appeal, but inner city traffic. I mean, Martin Luther King is one of the busiest streets on the east side. Buckeye is one of the most pre uh, prestigious streets on Buckeye because of the history and where it's going right now. We are right on the corner of that where, you know, how they had a sign lit up on a corner. Imagine that having the Black Phoenix and all the incorporation listed right there. To let the world know that we here to stay. This is the Black Phoenix. This is, this is better than Professor Xavier's shit. Question. We got cheese grits and shit. Yeah, hey, they ain't, they ain't, you right, they didn't have that at the uh, Professor X's place. Question. All right, so now, keep us moving. So we, we're, we're in that in that in that hall. Okay, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. That's just a church. I got a, I, I got a two-family house right now that's on the same Now, when you block. say two-family, it's like a duplex. It's a duplex. It's a small duplex, but it's a duplex. So that's for the king and the linguist. So where you gonna you are you planning to move into that house? Yeah. Okay. Now if I now initially if I move in on the on the top and have a co investor on the bottom, that's gonna be where the transitional living happens. Because eventually I will be able to step out of it. But right now, while getting everything together, that's where I have to be keep an eye on everything and to be able to make sure that, you know, uh, all interest is protected. Um, the, uh, you know, the brother that would live downstairs is the groundskeeper. So he takes care of all the landscaping details as well as, um, you know the uh, the establishment of the uh, the garden and the amphitheater and gazebo. So these are things that both he and I can do on a carpentry level. But um, his major function um, right now, I mean, he's a landscaper and he does the talk, you know what do you call it the uh, the plowing during the winter. So going into this new neighborhood for us in Cleveland and one of the things that we want to do is right before the grassy area is build a little garage for the plow truck and for whatever uh, facilities he needs to have on hand at all times and build a studio above that kind of like a watchtower right at the end of the property where um, it may not be as high as our steeple but you can see straight to downtown Cleveland from our steeple. All right. So total total estimate total a total estimate of the total cost of the project. So after 60, 60, 68,000, let's just say 70,000 is paid, the property is is owned. How much yeah. after the 70,000 has to be invested in order to make the vision that you just laid out for the people. How much would that be? Because and because about, two, about two and a half million. Okay. Which, by the way, once I own the deed, whether we just paid sixty eight right now, I'm flipping it to one eighty BP and Martin Education because that's my. Nonprofit. 
And in doing so, and in having seniors in there, we automatically get the FHA 202 redevelopment loan. And everything that I just said, we can contract to have done in real time without having to wait for money. Now, in the meanwhile, I would take some of that loan and be able to commission a high-end grant writer because I guarantee you that if that's exclusively their job to get money for us, that's exactly what they're going to do. And by the time that FHA 202 thing hit, we already going to have it in the bag. And, and, and we're going to keep our investors in the black. So, all right. So now, as far as investors, as an investor, how it, I'm, I'm investing. I say I got I got 8000 Say I got 8000 I drop 8000 So you got 8000 Let's say, or or better yet, we got a, we got a, let's say we got 100 investors that say, listen, we're going to pay into this $100 a month. So we got 100 they paying a hundred dollars a month. That's what, ten thousand. You say a hundred dollars a month. Say, say this again. What are we doing? A hundred, a hundred investors. We ain't got, we ain't got large money to drop, but we got a hundred people that say, "Listen, we willing to pay a hundred dollars a month as an investment." Okay. How, how, how do they? How 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 would they be able to recoup their investment? Because you keep you mentioned investors. I want to understand. So how how does an investor get money out of this? If you invest on the space and you understand the programming that's going on in there, of course you get a you uh, because you're investing in in the space. You're not investing in the business. All right, so it's it's just it's, it's simple. If you own a, a piece of a parcel and inside of that parcel it's being rented, then you get that percentage of of, of what what you want. So if I say, hey, uh, anything below 10000 I'm not interested in. But at 10000 today, because of where I'm at in, in this conversation, I would be willing to give, um, you know, that in percentage to the parcel that the, uh, that the rectory is in. Right? So if 10000 can get you 10%, of the parcel with the rectory and with the uh, with the youth arts program, hey, both of those programs is guaranteed money because it's coming from the state. So you guaranteed to get your ten percent of that rent that 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 parcel. So you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I understand, but now you you use you use terms like guarantee. Okay. I mean, I mean, anybody that know the biz know what it is. I'm I not, mean, I'm, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm in that biz. There's no guarantee of shit with these motherfuckers. But I hear you. Um, but uh, yeah, we can work it. All right. So, all right. Because what I'm saying is, I just want to make sure that when, when, when my piece is because right now, like I said, I don't got no eight thousand. But what my problem is that we have to talk about credit before we before we even reach numbers of a million dollars. As a group, as individual, you know what I'm saying? As a group, now I, I, no, I mean, and even beyond the credit conversation, because that's listen. I under we can we we can talk about credit until we blew in the face. But here's the peak. The strategy. Oh man, hold on one second. He said, "Hold on," and I'm holding. Oh, we're holding, holding on, holding, just holding on. So I'm right now, for those that are just joining us, we are talking to Brother Shaka Shaka has come into a property up in Cleveland that he wants to develop. He wants to develop it for the tribe. It's a nice, large parcel of land. That's going to require is 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 the purchase is about seventy thousand to renovate so that it can really service the community and the surrounding metropolis of Cleveland. Um, we'll take about two and a half mil. Let's just say three million dollars to do it. It's not big money, but for a lot of us, it is big money. And the one thing that I need black folks to start understanding when we start talking about numbers like. Uh, 
100,000, That's not big money for a group. It's not supposed to be big money for a group in America. But what we have to what we have to realize is where we are and why we are in the situation where we are, where right now, just between those of us that listen, because like I said, on, on Giami Journey, at least twenty at least twenty of y'all popping in per day. And what I need to make sure is that we start we we're growing and we're growing and understanding that damn it's some shit that's not right. When we can't you know what I'm saying, we you know, a hundred thousand dollars is it's like just for 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 the group. It's like we came and asked the question. Well, you know, we right. got. We got I know, mean, if we talking about credit, hot Tim, the piece is is that I'm not. See, you know, we but have to, I'm not even talking have, about. My my issue is I'm upset that we even got to talk about credit at this point in time. Right, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that we really don't. We just got to talk about strategy to be able to accommodate that. And all I'm saying is is that if. If we follow the plan, the, the, the same plays that they play, and then what I say is they, is that, listen, right now, the Black Phoenix is just a name. It ain't no corporation. It ain't nothing like that. Here's why. Because I understand the difference between horizontal businesses or a horizontal business model and a vertical one. He says is that if I set the Black Phoenix as the incorporation of everything, when they attack me, everything goes down. The other way, it's different. We own the property as a, uh, you know, what the piece is, is that we maintain the businesses in the sense where if, if one of the individuals is attacked, we pick up and we continue to go. Now, he says is that we have the ability to build the same straw man that they use against us, basically a dead man to take all the shots, all right? And, and that's what in, in corporations are. So when when we get the Black Phoenix, you know, incorporated with its own tax identification number, and we take that tax identification number, and we get the the, 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 uh, the Dun, Dun and Bradstreet number attached to that so that they're paying attention to all the, all the details that's going on with, with this new straw man, right? After a year, you have a perfectly sound, and brand new corporate cycle score. And with that corporate cycle score, you can go anywhere and apply for anything and say, hey, Black Phoenix, and they ask for the Social Security number, and you write down the tax ID number, and that entity in itself is its own straw man. All we have to do is protect a straw man. And the piece is that, yo, that's the only thing we as a group need to do. So when we're going to pay our so, bills, we make sure that that straw man bill is paid on time first because that's the one that we use to be able to make some of these uh, bigger advancements. Outside of that, if we are diligent enough to be able to request and, uh, and, 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 and you know these funds, whether it be through uh, philanthropists or angel investors or venture capitalists or even the grants from these uh, RFPs, I mean, we got somebody that can do that. But we just have to have the provision and the faith in the vision that's been um, uh, um, provided. And over the, all these years, I know, I Tim, all the things that I that I mentioned to you know it, it, that's going into this space. It's not coming out of nowhere. This has always been the plan. It's just that I've never had a building that was so accommodating to this plan, and this is it. So we 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 have to move forward. Well, I you know. Cause I, I hear you about me. See, cause now let me you you lose people like me when you start talking about straw man and shit like that, right? Because I don't, I don't, I don't speak that language. I don't. That's not part of. I heard other people. I heard talking about that. It never worked out good for them. They did the straw man <laughs> thing. I'm just did saying. We, did we did we talk about the Wizard of Oz? Yeah, we talked about. That. I mean, but the Wizard of Oz is is is, is a movie. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's a lesson no. in the movie. But what I'm saying, no, is, okay. no, 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 no. That's what. That's my point. Before it was a movie, it was a book. I'm not even talking about the movie. But that's all. If that's our only reference to it, piece is that the book was written in an allegory to warn the American people about when the change of affairs was going to happen, and that is basically 
Frank L. Baum's contribution to kind of a, a, a underground but railroad. Know, you, for those, but you know Frank uh, L. Baum, you know he he denies that. What? Frank L. Baum denies that. He says that it wasn't written like that. All this shit, according to what he's saying, this is him. That that shit wasn't, it wasn't written like that. Yet people taking it like that. Frank L. Baum is saying, the one that wrote The Wizard of Oz, is saying, that he, I didn't tell my, I, that's not what I was talking about. Other people done took uh. what he wrote, and they, they're pulling this out. Unless you have some infi, inside information that we don't have, which is very possible. But when you go and you look up the history of Wizard of Oz, and you start tracing back all this shit, Frank L. Baum is saying, I didn't mean none of this shit that people was picking up on. See, because it's like, what I'm saying is, talk plain to me, because is a church a straw man? You saying the straw man, is the church a straw man? No. No. I'm saying. Why wouldn't it be? Because it's a corporation. It's a non-profit corporation. But it's not until we make it that. No, what I'm saying is, itself. I'm asking it's, the question. It's, it's, Give me an example of a straw man. Is a church a straw man? Those are two different questions. It's only one answer. I'm just waiting for you to get ready for it. All right, I'm all right, I'm get ready. I'm ready. Your social security number is a straw man. When you go to court, they don't see you. They don't see your face. They don't see your soul. They see your straw man. Your straw man is what determines what race you are, what sex you are. That's all that counts. Your social security number says that you're a black man. Shaka. So, well, hold what's on. that? Listen, listen, bro. There ain't going to be a lot of us that's going to be supported. I mean, make this shit plain for me. I mean, it, I, the, the straw man and all that. I mean, listen, I'm trying to tell you. Everyone that I have dealt with who talked about that straw man shit it has not so why are you out. asking about it if you want to just leave it alone? What is it that you really want to know? What I, I want to know is what I want to know is because we on here. Be careful what you ask. What 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 do you really want to know? All right, cool. How do you plan to make money from the property? I mean, do you have do you have the written plan ready for for people that want to invest, for people that may be interested? Do you have a written plan ready for people to be able to either look at, you can send it to them, you can talk with I mean, because it's like, I mean, the plans you've got are beautiful, and I think that it could be work. But what I'm saying is when we get into this whole strong, I mean, I, I just want to know, I, my question was about how we gonna, how you going to make money, how, how we going to make this profitable. If I get people involved and I'm able to get people to pay a little bit per month, because right now you're hustling trying to get to 6000 If I get enough people, people interested on in my end, to want to start investing on a monthly basis so that we can start being able to help you accomplish some of this shit, right? How is the money going to be coming in? How do How is money going to be generated? I think that's what I said a half hour ago, but I'll say it again. When I get the property, I will flip it out of my name into my nonprofit name which gives it the rights that you're talking about as a church. All right? So doing that means that we can clear a, a FHA loan because we are providing uh, these services to elders, and that's going to get the whole thing developed. How do we pay off that loan? We pay that off. With a super fly uh, grant right, every service that we're providing, we get grant money for. How does the investor make money? You have a property that has an equitable value. Upon the sale or the lease of this is how any property makes money. Sure, I don't Barry. get what's being asked. What well, up? So, so there is no guarantee for money. Why is there not? I mean, because I if don't, you don't if, believe, listen, listen. Anybody that doesn't believe that there's going to be money, abandon ship. Do not even pay attention to the rest of the conversation. 
That's Shaka. That's not how it's Shaka. No, 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 Right, you can't know, tell motherfuckers who might have questions for you, abandon ship. That's not how you do business, nigga. You know that. You can't do no, that. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. I have a protocol, and you asking me about my shit. Nigga, I, listen, you your protocol listen, don't listen, shape listen, reality. Listen. Nigga, you in another reality. I'm trying to help you, and you sitting up here talking about your protocol. Nigga, your protocol ain't producing. What I'm asking is, if we get people... To want to back this, brother, how do we make money off? There's no guarantee for no motherfucking grant. Man, listen to me. It's still only one answer, no matter how hard you ask. Point of the value is, is that if you don't interface to, number one, understand that to believe in it, you won't have that question about how, because you're part of the process. No, that's and called, to, and, and that's to, called, bro. When we did, Michael, when I do, when I do anything... I ain't asking people just for belief. I'm saying, listen. All right, cool. We're going we to we lose money. Be honest with us. We're going to lose money. We, you, 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 we, we, we may lose money. This shit may not be successful. You're coming saying there's right. guarantees. There's no guarantee. Just be honest with us. There's no way we no, can... No, 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 I'm no. I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with you because I wouldn't have it no other way. And I wouldn't put nobody with doubt in a seat to be able to make that move. So my point is, is that when we understand what it is and we honor it, we honor it with a protocol. I'm not knocking on doors. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm saying for those of us who say that we believe, there is a protocol to be able to make it happen. And we step in with both feet at the same time. That's what I did to be able to get to the point that I'm at right now. Shocking. And even standing alone and without this conversation, I still feel more confident that when I hang up, it's going to do what it's supposed to. And now that you're paying attention, I want you to see that. I want you to see what it is to be faith-based instead of fear-based. Fear-based is when you start asking about all the different that's factors that's outside of our That's our, not our fear. Power. That's not fear. That's not fear. That's called faith. common sense. Nigga, if I'm going to war... Nigga, I can't just go to the battlefield. You can't get me to the battlefield just doing some faith shit. Now, if I know that I'm going to die, nigga, I want to know that there's a possibility. And as a matter of fact, there's a majority of the possibility that I'm going to die so that when I'm going to war, I already know there's no retreat. So I could give you my total focus, my total attention, and be ready for the command so that I could kill whoever the fuck coming up to me before my time come. But if you hit me with some illusionary shit, there's no way that I could actually go into a battle and help you win. Because I'm thinking that there's a possibility that we're going to come out this shit. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm starting to pick up on it. Half of this shit wouldn't even be a conversation between me and you publicly if you would have just read the perspectives that I sent to you. It's the same thing that's in the plan from night from, from 2010. From me, before I even came back to Cleveland, it's the same plan. You got it all in your email. I just never stopped, stopped the script. It's the same stuff. Socrates International Soul Food Cuisine, Messengers Lounge, all of that is the same shit from 15 years ago. If you believed in it, if you saw the vision, we wouldn't have this question right now. That's what's offensive to me. You, listen, that's bad leadership, dog. You got to be ready for questions. Now, because I want no, you no, to... No, wait, no, 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 I want you to listen. Wait, hold on. Joe Barry is online. Sister CeeLo is online. Navita is online right now. We got people possibly listening to us that have not seen the perspectives, that's having the questions that I'm asking right now. And you're not handling that shit very well. You like you right, got a building. When I start to answer it. Yo. But uh, then nobody is no, no, nobody on, is nobody is on the straw man shit. You man, can't, just hold on one second. Family, this is what I'm going to do. 
Hey, yo. Go ahead. I got the money on the other line. I'll All call right. y'all back cool. later. Peace. All right, family. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether I need to apologize for that or what. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? On my end, right? Because my question is, I got to, I got to ask some questions. I have to know. We have to know, right? You know, because like I said, if I'm, if I'm going to have people that's with me, right? Don't. All right. But listen, you have any questions, feel free to hit Shaka up at the mind of Shaka. Ask the questions and you know what I'm saying? Make it work. Um. I'm about to wash dishes. I'm gonna go so go somewhere and probably get me a flight because it is starting to get me a flight and chill. Um, like I said, nation builders out there, you know we got we got some stuff we got to deal with here in Columbus, um, so that we can start really start building. And then, like for example, my whole piece is so next time an opportunity come or even this time if opportunity come, we got money. To where, as a group, we could decide, well, hey, we're going to invest. No, I don't think we should. And we can have a conversation. All right? And be able to answer questions. Because, you know, I, I get uncomfortable with answering some questions, too. Because, you know, like I said, a lot of stuff I do off belief and shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. All right. But this is Brother Hot Tim. And I'm saying, I'm out. Peace, fam. Where we at? Oh, remember, you are now listening. To Giami Journey Media. Oh, brother. All right, um, uh, brother Joe Barry. Um, he asked the question. Okay, what's going on? I came in on the end of everything. Shaka uh ran into an opportunity. Um, he bought a cathedral in Cleveland. Um. He went, he bid it on it. I think he came out to about sixty-eight thousand. I'm gonna just say seventy thousand dollars for the cathedral. Nice big piece of property. Building needs work. Um, he has uh, a refract, uh, um, um, living space on the inside of the cathedral, as well as a, a, a two-family unit. Uh, he needs help with the down payment, and renovations are going to cost about two million. So when you came in on the discussion, I was asking about, you know what I'm saying, um, about the money-making aspect of the business. Because if you're asking people to invest, it's different than asking people to donate. Because when you ask somebody to donate, they know that there's a good chance that, I mean, they, there's nothing coming back. Right? There's nothing coming back. But when you invest, there's something coming back. So I'm asking business questions. And um, like I said, I'm just trying to, one, make sure that everybody that's, that's with us have an opportunity to, to see what's possible and what's not possible. What can be done and what can't be done, period. You know what I'm saying? So, somebody just came back on the line. Who on the phone? Sister uh, my, my computer froze up on me, so I couldn't hear the show. So, <laughs> I was on my laptop. But I, caught the, I was in the middle. I caught the beginning of the conversation then i had to step away then i caught the ending right but go ahead so i can get caught back up I, i'm please. just i was explaining so the, my question was where is the money coming from because we got a building that's seventy thousand dollars um the down payment have to be made and then there's going to be like two and that two and a half million dollars worth of innovations to get it up to what shaka's vision is which, which is a very beautiful vision, very community centered type vision. But the question, if you asking people to to donate, is there is no question. We believe in what you're talking about, and some and when you donate, you know you're not gonna get shit back. But when you're talking to people, when you're saying things like invest, right? This means that invest. It, yeah, that means you get a return. You get a return. There are, but even with investment, there's a possibility that you could lose money. But by saying investment up front, mm -hmm. what happens is you set yourself up. For a fall, because I have a partner right now who had people invest in his company because they wanted their money back. You know what I'm saying? And he wasn't able to produce the money back. They gave him dope man time. I'm like, yo, I've been through, I've been down this road. I don't want to, I'm not trying to go down this road again. Right? So invest or donate. And another, the other piece that I was saying and that I was trying to bring in is that it's a shame that when we're talking about $70,000 and we got people, um, 
We got what? About about at least 15 people in our tribe. And I don't know how many people he got in Cleveland and who he working with up there. But between all of us, I'm wondering, you know what I'm saying? What is it saying about us that we got to even talk about credit when it comes to $70,000 for a fucking building? You know what I'm saying? I mean, not that mm-hmm. you, you you would necessarily want to invest in, we would necessarily want to invest it as a group, but as a group, I think at 70, I mean, I'm thinking about between between zero and $300,000, if we was actually handling our business, there shouldn't be no problem with us being like, boom, let's drop, hey, shit, all right, cool, $70,000, let's, you know, how much we got? You know what I'm saying? Because churches can do shit like that. These are right. the, these are the motherfuckers that we be looking at. The cops community be looking at, laughing at. But a church seventy thousand dollars ain't shit to, the, to to a lot of these churches. Right, it ain't. It ain't shit. Well, if you had seventy people to invest a thousand dollars, that's seventy thousand dollars. But there's a lot of components, I think, in this. Seventy thousand dollars ain't shit. A lot of these churches. Hello. Somebody needs to turn the radio down. Because you cast the whole show. Probably me. Who's that? Probably me. Joe. What's up, man? What's up, Joe? How you been doing, sir? All right. Uh, I'm I'm kinda sorry that you caught us on the um caught us on, on, on this aspect of of the show. You know what right. I'm saying? So cause I'm like I'm like my pieces, I'm trying to help I want to help bruh raise the dough that he need. But I you know what I'm saying, I can't I can't necessarily if if you saying invest, and I can't really explain to people how they gonna get their money back. It's not investment. Exactly. It's a donation. Right. And let's be right. clear with the people about that because what happens is when you say investment and motherfuckers get unhappy or the government start whispering in their ear or or some other shit pops off and they want their money back and you can't produce their money. You got a whole nother problem. And, and, and another thing, too, is because I was a bit confused about, and I was, I, was, I was in and out of doing things, but there was an issue. Was it, what was it with the white dude? Was it a white dude that wanted to actually get the property and you, then sell the same glass? I don't, know if and, it, I don't know if it was a white guy, but it was somebody that was willing to finance the whole project. Well, finance at least and get the property. But they wanted everything in their name if they was going to put their credit score up and and their money. Which... Mm-hmm. Didn't, didn't you say it needed some work done to it? Yeah, I mean... A million dollars, two it, million no, dollars two, worth of stuff before the project even was going to be, I guess. Million. Cleveland was listening to what he wanted to do with the with the playground across the street in Cleveland. Because I had to yell at Cleveland. Because Cleveland took my damn phone and was watching it and started typing up comments up under my name. I'm like, yo... Cleveland said, hey, that's gonna cost a lot of money. Because I you know, and I'm and you but Cleveland seen this shit. You know what I'm saying? And so he got quit, like, yo, where is this coming? Where is this dough coming from? Because there's no way that you could guarantee any money. I don't give a fuck what who who you sign up under. I done been working with nonprofit organizations for a long time, and money is never guaranteed. It's never guaranteed. Right. So I can I mean, write a two million dollars is a lot of money. So if you get everybody to invest to get the property, and then you got to figure out how you're going to get this $2 million to, I guess, cultivate the property. Well, well, in the village, how many people uh, 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 rehab houses or do rehab? Uh, how many people uh, can come up with uh, materials there on a go. discount inside the, I'm talking about inside the village. Inside the village. Instead of going in, instead of going outside the village, you go inside the you village. Say, okay, who know how to rehab? Okay. Okay, y'all six know how to rehab. We're gonna rehab this place. Who can get material at a discount? Okay, you can get material at a discount. Hell, Let's who can steal the shit? I mean, you I know? don't care. I'm just I mean, but that's how we that's how we get down. That's how we used to get down. But right now, Brother Joe, the issue with that is that we don't even have a database to even know what people's careers are. I just got a picture on my, and this is this some serious shit. I just got a picture on uh, on an email from one of my elders that I have known for years that I didn't even know worked with jet engines. He got a picture with himself sitting in front of a, a Rolls Royce jet engine. I didn't even know that this man worked with jet engines. 
Who right. you talking, Brother Dave? Yeah, I didn't know that shit. Man, you ain't know that? No. Man. See, but the point I'm making is like you know, and so how many how many of these young people I done had that came through that I didn't I didn't take take advantage uh, take advantage of the, of the relationship I had with Brother Dave to possibly plug them into some type of um, mentorship program to where they could be doing what he doing. And we've done, I've done that with him before, where we've had tours with young folks right. and, and introduced them to the um, aspect of, because there's a schooling available <coughs> for them to do the training, and it's not that long to become certified to uh, become an airline mechanic. So we used to do uh, tours with young folks and bring them to, uh, up to NetJets and let them tour the planes and and, and tell them about um, different programs that were available to them as far as once they graduate from high school that they can apply for um, the schools that have the certification and even grants to pay for. And it's not that expensive. And I think it's a two-year program, if I'm not mistaken, 18 months, two years, or something like that. And I've been, <clears throat> Brother Joe, the point I'm trying to make is I've, I've known this dude for over, it's been almost almost at least 20 years. I didn't know. Right. So Lord knows how many, how I mean, how many we have, but we don't have that database. We don't have that information. And on top of that, we don't have a fund. See, because what I'm saying is, for me, it's kind of problematic to come to the community and the community don't have a fund. You know what I'm saying? Where we could be like, boom, you want to, hey, you could throw 10000 in, but the, you know, the family is going to take care of this. You know what I'm saying? We, we're well, going to invest as a community and be able to have a, a lump sum of money where we're able to pull from because we've been we've been paying taxes to our goddamn self. We've been tithing or whatever the fuck you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? Right. To a central body that we could pull from so that we could take advantage of economic opportunities as a group when they come. Rather than one motherfucker going out here and being able to buy an apartment complex for pennies like that shit, like, like the shit, like, for example... Y'all know over there, over there by Mount Vernon, where they got that big building with the pyramid on top, and all those surrounding yeah. apartments. Do you know they sold that shit to to uh, um investment firm for like two and a half million dollars? On both those buildings, those those high rise buildings, and all those apartments that surround that shit, they sold all that shit over there in Mount Vernon for like two point five mil. Two point. That's a whole community. They take, they're not taking care of those apartments because they've been on the news two or three times. Exactly. What I'm saying is they sold that all that property for two point five million dollars. What if what, what if we was what if we had this, you know what I'm saying? We we like you brought up, we know all the skills. we got all the people with skills, we know the people skills that our people bring. We got the money. We're able to go in there, we able not only we able to go in and be hands on and be like, yo. You and your family got to go because I, we see what the fuck you doing. Y'all can stay. Boom, boom, boom. We can help y'all. We put who we want in that in that area. Because I want you to think about that. That whole area, that's a zip code. Right. That's a zip code with voting power. That's a city that we, that's basically a city that we could have had that we could have took over for two point, for, for, for less than $3 million. Right. A whole area. Yeah, but like you said, if you go by where we, uh, the income that you're saying that they say that we have an average make, that's that's very hard for us to obtain at 17, what did you say it was, a year. Yeah, yeah I agree. 17,000 a year. But yeah. this, and sometimes I think we have to learn to take smaller steps instead of taking this big leap. There you go. See, and okay, I now first of all, first thing is if somebody is asking me, to invest a certain, what I would consider a large sum money to me is piddly money and it's throwaway money. I don't care about it. But when you start getting into the thousands, maybe for some even the hundreds, I'm going to look at the person who's asking me to do it. I'm just telling you the truth. And i got to see where you, where your business savvy has been. If I can look at your record and see that you have a history of being, for lack of a better term, business savvy. Because I'm not just going to invest in somebody and not know their background. Right. And right, right. Which is fair. You ha I have to know. That's fair. What have you produced to show me that you know what you're doing with my investment? Now, if I can't see anything that, I'm, that I feel that you have done 
to, then I'm not going to invest. And if I see something that I feel you have done and you've had a good track record or whatever, then I'm going to be more freely to invest. You know what I'm saying? Um, for a person to tell me that once I invest, we still, I think we got to do, we, like I said, the baby step things or small steps because, I mean, once we got this, you know, then where's the money going to come from? Right. Who's going to finance this millions that we need? And then... Or can who's, we... Who, or, or who's, even... Who's, I think, you know, and like in this particular case, he would live on the land. Am I correct? I mean, eventually he would have to. I mean, I would imagine. I mean... Well, I found out he said he would actually live there I, on the land. I, 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 yeah, I think and, he would, but he didn't say... I asked him, would he live in a house? He said he would for a little while. So, But I wanted to be clear on that because it, it, that for me, that would only make sense. See, because this is up in Cleveland. This is not in Columbus, by the way. So those right. of you that's, that's checking in, you need to understand, this is up in Cleveland. I mean, I mean, uh, excellent. I'm like this. If, if, if financing is there and guaranteed money is there, excellent investment. If not, road to destruction. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. ru ru not the destruction to ruin. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, yo, I mean, it's like, you know, I, I I, don't, I can't take my little bit of money on just belief. You know what I'm saying? I'm, right. You, right. I, that, that's not, with this, this, that's not the move. We, we, Imani is only one of the motherfucking principles. I need to see the other well, principles at work well, too. What I'm saying is, is get, first you get the building. And then you can short some of that money on labor on on labor by uh, getting people that are going to help you do the labor. And it's, you know what I'm saying that's why I said in the village if you if you know people that know how to rehab, know how to do plumbing, know how to do electric, you get that will short done. some of the labor costs. But the but the point that's is that's their investment. To, that's their investment by go. helping. We okay, you, you you do the electric and part. And what's the return on the investment? investment? No, because you know, the, the, ma the material they borrow. No, what he's saying, what she's saying is, what what are they going to get back for? And that's something that could be worked out. But the issue is, right. there is no database for us to be able to say who does what. Well, that us. could be created. They could that can be right. done. But as a book, let me you know, as a person that you know, I work with investing. I work in banking. That's what I do for a living. Okay. I, knew you I need to have are you just solid. Saying, are you saying you a pimp? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. Just be clear. But certified, maybe. You know what I'm saying? We, set of, they're going to have to have solid. Um, I need to have solid. I don't have that kind of money to, you know, if I right. take a loss. Well, I'll be like, damn, I just took that. And I don't have it like that. Now, some people have it like that, and that's cool. But I don't have it like that. So I have to, when, if I'm going into invest, and even companies that do sometimes have it like that, I need to know specifically how am I going to recoup on my investment. It's just like going on Shark Tank. Right. They will invest, but they want to know how am I going to recoup. Right. My right. Investment. Is, that, is that not a fair question? Well, it is a fair question. It is a fair question. But why would you get the building and you don't have a solid foundation on how people are going to recoup their investment? I'm not going. You can't get the bill. I'm not going to give you the money to get the building if I don't know how I'm going to get my investment recoup. There is going to be no building, not from my end. I need to know how. <laughs> if you're talking from an investment perspective, if you're getting the building. Based on my investment, then tell me what's in it for me. It's called reciprocity. Tell me what's in it for Ooh. me. Yes, pe How people can come in and they can do things like Brother Joe was saying and help out with the plumbing and stuff. But let me tell you something: people, some people don't have that money to lose because that materials and stuff is not cheap. That you're gonna have to pay them still for the materials at least. Right, that's part it's of your investment. It's gonna take to go into into the. That's that's an. But how am I gonna recoup that? So now I didn't give you money for the building. Now I didn't put them because you need money for the building. Like you're saying, Joe, you right. gotta have the building first. Okay, so okay, now you're telling me to get the money for the building. Cool. Now you're telling me to um, get the materials. But when I tell you that the, I, I got this money in the materials, you keep saying, "Well, that's part of the investment." 
So I got a double investment going here, which is cool. No, 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 no. Okay, for instance, let's say I'm an electri uh, electrician. Okay, you come to me, you say, okay, I got the building. We need some electrical work done. Your part of the investment is by uh, you telling me this. You get the material and, and, and get this uh, electric worker, and just give me the receipt, and that's part of your your investment. Well, so what I spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on on electrical parts, that that's my investment. Okay. Same way, whoever rehabbing it. So who's okay. really going to go in and twenty thousand dollars worth of electrical uh, work? They're not even willing to say. I don't know. I'm an accountant. You gotta remember me, so I'll be thinking of the details. So you're saying. <laughs> To me, that I need to give you the twenty thousand dollars in equipment. I haven't even, and the labor part is going to be a free donation to you. And then I still need to know. No, if I want to invest as an as a, as a electrician, I said, well, I'm a, I'm a, I want to invest in that, but this is where I'm going to invest, and I'm I'm going to go ahead and buy the. Okay, that's uh, cool. So where, how do yeah. I get the back on my? Okay, I got that. Well, how do I get my money back? We're saying investment here. I invest with the intent of recouping my money. What's a profit? Okay, well, well right. once the building gets get together, once the building, once you get the building together and you do what he, he, business plan. He, he, right, do what he said he wants to get done. <laughs> the, 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 the money should start coming. You know, he, he want to open up this big, this big building and, and, and it's supposed to have a couple of apartments in there. You're going to rent out a couple of those apartments. Uh, you maybe start a business up in okay. there. You might have a couple, couple. You know, say a coffee shop, uh, See, right? A sandwich shop, uh, and be and all I'm saying is, when the, you need to. This be is clean. when this stuff, this money start coming in. Now, now you got, now you got the building running, and, and everybody okay. put their put their money in, and their time in there can start seeing their profit coming. Hopefully, you know, like you said, okay. it takes little steps, not real steps, big steps. Right. I'm not gonna give you. Cause I, I ain't got that kind of money either. I'm not gonna just try to get twenty thousand dollars and hand it to you. I'm gonna put my sweat and tears in it like you did. Now so we you all put, well, you can so still hand you, it to him because you, the materials are not for free. Right. Well, That's right. Not right. Much money. At, Let's get that but, clear. Only thing you, you're gonna be giving labor for free, but any work you do right. requires something that costs money. Right. So you're right. Still right. Giving your money. Yeah. Well, you sure, but not all at once. I, you know, I can get a little bit over time. Of this, right. I can get a little this, bit of that. Right. Right. Time, right. As the building is being rehabbed. Now. You see what I'm saying? But Joe, I'm not giving a big chunk sum and say, okay, mm -hmm. I hope you. I, I wish you luck. So I want to see what's going on too. So I'm putting my free labor there in there and, and 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 buying materials as time goes on. You talking about putting building skin in together, the game. and you and you do your little grand opening or get this little other little business coming in there to open up a business. And if you got three or four apartments back there, and you're gonna rent out three of them and stay in one. Then there you go. The place is starting right. open. Now, I mean, this is well, like an issue, but you really Joe, have to, because uh, with the small steps you're talking about, then you're going to run into having a lot of people's hands in the pot because you, because of the small steps you're talking about, you're going to need a lot of people to make those small steps. Those now. small, yeah, those small steps. Right. Now, this is the issue. So this that is, means a lot where... of it's a lot of detail that will go into that. Right. If you look at it from an investment side of the game, but if it's right. a donation side there we of the go. game, Thank that's you. all different. But if you're looking at it from an investment side of the game and you're looking at it from as an investor, just like I said, when I need to have the intricate details because now you're bringing into the pot not just I'm investing. But we got other got investors that have to be investing, paid. And I got this. We got a whole bunch. And that's fine. But you still have to um, tell me and all these other people how we're going to recoup our money. And then you got to make sure you – it's a whole – Thing, and you have to speak from a, a county and you, perspective. And you have to speak. You have to speak because when I was talking to him, he went to the to, to straw man discussion. I said most people don't understand the straw man piece. You can't. You can't hit us like you can't hit me with that. I'm about. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo. I'm talking to some people that might look at what you're doing through how Tim lens and be like, yo, brother, how Tim? I believe in you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go and invest in this. And they lose their goddamn money because you want some money. I'm, no. You, right. You my brother. And I, all I'm trying to do is help you refine your delivery. Everybody, I, I don't listen. My elders. Yeah, it just needs to be refined a bit. 
and and it, and I don't know what type of land it is, and if there are, you saying there's apartments on this land? It's, then, well, I mean, it's you apartments. Need to have a budget, a potential. It, it's a whole big shebang. You can't just. And you can't do it by yourself. Give me the you money and trust me, and I'm going to make it happen for right. you while I live on this motherfucker, while y'all finances. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then he went back, then it then, then it went back to the belief. And it's like, bro, it's not about, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm like this. I just need to be clear. Because I'm one of those that if you my dude, I I'll go to the grave with you, but be honest with me. Right? You saying when you say investment, you saying there's a good chance that I'm gonna get some money back. You know what you're doing, you can almost guarantee right. for you. But when if you say that I'm that there's you I'm donating, it's a whole different thing. But we we can say I don't like we, the part. We when he said, then abandon ship, I'm like, hold up. You're going to have me help you out something? you going to push me out the ship? No, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, family. I'm like, yo, it ain't it ain't <laughs> like that. I'm just asking questions. You think, so how are you going to handle somebody who hasn't dealt with you for 15 years? Now, I read, I, read the, I, read the, I read the paper that he sent 15 years ago, but we're living in a different time. I lost a half million dollars since then. You know what I'm saying? Within the, I, lost, right. I, I lost a half million dollars since then. The laws have changed since then. I have to go back and I have to refine shit for Giami all the motherfucking time. We went from Giami Journey. We went from Giami Nation Builders Club to Giami Tribe to Giami Journey to Giami Journey Media. Because I constantly have to update my shit. I constantly have to look for different people with different skills. I constantly have to work with different people. I can't, things have to change. So I have to make sure that the organization that I represent has to change with the times. So I can't hit people if I'm showing them shit from the past. It's for nostalgia's sake. I'm going to go. I got some on my other line. Yeah, I'll talk to y'all later. Yes, sir. But if you're interested, give Brother Saka a call. But, uh, all right, now you got me on here talking about this shit. It's your fault, Navita. Damn it. So, you still there? Or you hung up too, Navita? She just put her phone down. All right, family, I just want to thank y'all for tuning in. All those that are interested in talking with Shaka and going a little bit more in depth about this um, investment or donation or, you know what I'm saying, feel free to contact him at the mind of Shaka. Because my my, I, my my piece is I want to stay supportive in what I do. I want to be able to, if I got dough, to break it off for people who have good ideas. And this, for me, is a good idea. But when you say investment to me, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, I'm hearing something. I'm hearing something that I feel I need and deserve certain answers when I ask questions. Period. You know what I'm saying? And and I have to, and I, I have to, for his family, for all of y'all that might know him only through me, I have to be able to ask these questions so that I feel comfortable when I'm talking to y'all about this shit. Because my, the last thing I need is for something to go awry and then y'all looking at me, I ain't got no money to re refund your shit. Sorry, right, family, this is Brother Hot Tim, and I am up and out.